The first area that we'll go ahead and update and add for basic auth is going to be in our applications config module.config.php file. So we'll start by going in there and finding our service factory service manager area. The first thing that we want to add is the Zend authentication adapter factory. That's going to look like this. So I'm giving the service manager factory name of authentication adapter and I'm setting it to the application factory authentication adapter factory Zend class. Next, we need to actually add the book app authentication adapter and how that's going to work. This essentially tells us what kind of adapter it is and how we're going to configure it. So we can do that in the same file and I'm going to go ahead and put that underneath the translator configuration. But this can kind of live wherever. This is going to look something similar to this. First, we're configuring it to accept basic authentication and digest authentication. If you want to choose one or the other, you can, but most browsers when they're implementing this will support both or pass in possibly both mechanisms. Then the realm, this is what gets displayed on your pop-up configuration for the authentication. In this case, we're just saying that this is an authentication basic auth for the book list site. You can specify other information such as the digest domain and the timeout. And in this case, I'm just going to lock down the book portion of our application because that essentially is our whole portion of our application. And last, we need to tell it what, where the passwords live and those are going to live in these files configured here. So go ahead and save that file. And the next thing, since we've just added these password files, Let's go ahead and add those up into our configuration folder. So underneath the auto load folder, underneath our main config, go ahead and create a new folder called real. And this is where our basic and digest password files are going to live. So go ahead and create a new one. I'm also going to create the digest password file. Basic file contents are not very secure since everything is kind of in plain text. So in this case, we're setting up a user and a password for our book list site realm. And the digest password is a little bit more secure since the password is actually hashed. And you can see here, we have the hash of our password, password. Again, user and password is not a very good username and password, but this is just a demo on getting this set up. So I'm just going to save both of these files. And last, we need to configure our module.phps on Bootstrap so that we know how to get our authentication adapter working and plugged in once our Zend app is bootstrapped and loaded. So that is going to live underneath the application module again in the module.php file. This is the same function that we added our translator browser locale preference switcher from. And underneath there, we're going to go ahead and add our authentication adapter configuration as well. So the first thing that we're going to do is get a hold of the authentication adapter that we've added into our config.php file. And we can do that just by asking the service manager for it. The next thing we'll do is get the request and response from it. And then have the auth adapter perform and authenticate. This is the portion that actually displays the pop-up screen to authenticate for this portion of the app. In this case, we're authenticating for anything coming into our application. Next, we can check if the result is valid. If it is valid, we'll go ahead and return out of this method. Otherwise, they haven't provided a valid username and password. So the reason why we got a hold of the request and response is so that we can send back an access denied with the status code of 401 and then we return false out of here that says, hey, our Zend app hasn't booted correctly yet. So again, this is where you could configure which portions of your application you want to control authentication on. And in this case, we are controlling authentication on the entire application. 
Before we can fully test this out, we need to do some cleanup in here. And we also need to provide some extra implementation information for our module. First, I'm going to bring in our request and our response objects using the use statements. And I'm also going to have the module implement some new interfaces. This provides the ability for callbacks to occur and the right event mechanisms to be set up as we go through this. This changes the way that we bootstrap in slightly. We also need to import these particular classes up at the top with the use statement. The other thing that this changes is the on bootstrap event. It now uses an event interface instead of the basic MVC event. So make sure that you change the parameter of on bootstrap to event interface and pass in the event. And then next, I'm going to comment out the initial bootstrap loading events here. And I'm going to add a new way of getting our application and service manager by using the event get target and application get service manager calls. I can then use the service manager handle and simplify our translator a little bit by just using the service manager to get a hold of the translator. That way down here I can use the same service manager to get a hold of the authentication adapter. It's just doing some reuse there and keeping things a little simpler on the configuration. Since we changed the bootstrap function to bootstrap a little differently, we're actually going to roll this portion of the authentication adapter in a bootstrap event that occurs at the very last moment possible. So you can see here, now we get a hold of the application and now eventually we bootstrap off of the MVC event and we're using the service manager that we get a hold of up above. This just essentially bootstraps the application to the latest possible moment, which is what we want to do when we're working with our authentication adapter and trying to actually display the prompt or the login prompt. Next up, we need to actually create a custom authentication adapter factory that's configuring our basic auth. We're going to do that in the application module underneath the source application area. We're going to create a new folder called factory. We're going to create a new class under the factory. called Authentication Adapter Factory. This factory tells the service manager how to create our authentication adapter and pretty much the interesting information that you'll want to keep and look at is where we set up the basic and the digest password files and use that for our basic resolver and our digest resolver. Then we ultimately return our authentication adapter and the service manager utilizes that. The last thing we need to do is finish off the book app auth adapter that we added in the module.config.php file. We added a new book app in here that's going to get returned that specifies our basic digest and it also has some password files that were configured. Since this is getting bootstrapped ahead of time, we also need to add the book app auth local.php file so that we can specify those same password files. This is kind of like a chicken and an egg problem. Where do we actually get the file configuration from before you're bootstrapped? And we do that up here in the config area of the application. So underneath the auto load folder, you want to go ahead and create a new file and just call it book app auth .local .php. And all this is going to do is essentially just configure those same basic password files and the digest password file. So I'm back in my Firefox browser, which is actually set to use the Spanish locale from the previous translation effort. 
and we can go ahead and now and try to use our authentication app. So if we go ahead and click on the home button, it's going to ask for our username and password on a credential pop-up. And you can see that it's specifying our book list site. So let's go ahead and specify our username, which is user and password. And it went ahead and logged us in. And you can see that our translations are still working. So our Bootstrap event notification information is still working correctly with our module.php file. One thing to note when you're working with basic and digest hashes is that some browsers use different schemes and prefer some schemes over others. Even though you may specify basic, it may try to use digest ahead of basic and so forth just for security reasons. So if you're having issues with the login prompt popping up, make sure that your hash is still generated correctly using the MD5 functions or make sure that your schemes are set up correctly and your browser is complying with those schemes. So that wraps up our Zend authentication effort. As you can see, there's quite a bit involved with getting authentication working. We had to add in a custom adapter factory. We had to add lots of files concerning the password information. We had to configure our module.config.php file and our module bootstrap on event. We had to essentially override that as well.